I want to talk about faith today, and I know I talk about it a lot. I probably repeat myself when I come up here. I can't always remember what I preached on four weeks ago or whatever it was, so if I start repeating myself, somebody let me know. I repeat myself a lot, and Cain reminded me of that this morning. <laughs> One last time. You just said that. Yeah. I just said that. I'm moving three quarters of a continent away. Yeah, I know. Right? And my brother's three hours away. Um, the thing about faith is, is that you can say you have faith, you can feel like you have faith, but until you actually step out into it, is it really faith? And I think Pete was touching on that this morning in Sunday school about are we following God's lead when he asks us to? And that has a lot to do with our faith. Do we really have faith that when God says, hey, go pray for this person, or hey, send your son wherever, you know, or take a drive here, whatever it is, give your last five dollars to somebody. Do I have faith that God's going to take care of whatever situation that is? Yes, I might hear him. And yeah, I might get myself enough willpower to go and do what he's asking me to, but am I moving in faith or am I just doing it because that's what I think I should do? Am I operating because somewhere someone told me I should or am I doing this because of my love for God and my faith in him that he's going to see me through? I told you guys all the story about when I sent Cain to Africa. It was, I was freaking out, I was freaking out, and, and I said, God, I can't believe you're actually sending him here. And then my aunt and uncle sent him a check for $1,000, and I knew he was going. I, like, that was the point where my faith, the faith that I had that God was really doing this, and it actually coming and being visual in my face happened. Like, that, it was just that quick. Like, the second I seen that check, I was I looked at Cain and I said, you're going to Africa. Like, immediately. From that point on, then, that little boost of faith, I was fine the whole rest of the time. I mean, of course, I didn't say goodbye to him because I was worried about him. But I, as far as freaking out or anything like that, all gone. And this week, as I was getting ready to send Cain off, I was just telling Jim about this. So sorry you have to hear this again. My whole life, and Sydney can testify to this, I told my kids, you're not mine. You don't belong to me. God gave you to me to raise in his love and admonition. And, you know, for both Cain and Sydney, I think of for a while now, they've been done. They, they're gods. I mean, they're, they're mine. I'm still taking care of them. They're still my dependents, whatever you want to say. But they're God's kids. Well, I say that all the time. But then this last week, I was freaking out about Cain leaving. So where's my faith now, right? When I'm here in the middle of it, you know? I could talk about sending my king to the Marines last year and all the way up until two weeks ago. And then there came the test of my faith, right? So how, how far can I go? How, how, how strong is my faith? And so I was freaking out, and I remember, like, I kept, when every time I freak out, God said, he's not yours. And I'd freak out, and he'd say, he's not yours. And I'd freak out, and he'd say, he's not yours. <laughs> and I was sitting there talking to Cain, and we were going through what scriptures he wanted highlighted and stuff like that in his little Bible. Because that's the only thing you're allowed to bring with you is your little military Bible. And so I'm like, well, I want to make sure he's got all the good stuff so that if he just picks it up, he's, you know, being filled with not garbage or correction or, you know, all these other scriptures that are important, but, you know, uh, anyhow, he quoted me back a scripture, okay? And not that the kid hasn't done things far and beyond that, that it told me that he, he's okay. But it was kind of like that check. All of a sudden, my faith had a meeting point. The faith that I had that he really isn't my kid, that this is okay, that... I'm not taking care of him anymore, nor had I ever. God was there. And all of a sudden, I was like, boom. And the freaking out level went from here, clear down to here. I was like, oh, that was cool. That was really cool. Every day for the past two weeks, I would go down a path and, and of regret, of like, what did I do right? Like, how did I... Like, what did I do wrong with my kid? Too late now, but, you know, your mind starts 
thinking, oh no, what have I done here? What have I done here? And I started going down all these veins of raising a kid, okay? Like the fact that I let him get a job when he was nine, okay? The kid had a job when he was nine. Uh, just all these things, you know, the way I we taught him to swim, the same way Pete taught us to swim, throw him in, just let him learn, you know, let him drown a couple times. Um, sending him to Africa, sending him to Puerto Rico, just all these things I let him do. My husband letting him get a motorcycle, okay, and riding it around, and, and a really big motorcycle, a really fast, big motorcycle. And every time I went there, God was there at the end. And he's like, what? And he was like, what? What do you got to say? And I said, God, I've, I've trusted you. I've had faith in you to raise my kid this whole time. Why did you let me go wrong? Wrong. No, not wrong. There he was at the end telling me that. And after about two days of this, all of a sudden this picture came in my mind. And it said, it, I said, the picture that I see, and then out of my own head I said, I made him a Marine. Oh my gosh, that was me doing that. Oh, no wonder he's out, like, throwing him in the water and sending him to Africa and just making him do all this stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, all the gun education he's had his whole life, you know, all these things I keep thinking, that, that was what he was going to be. I don't think there was any other way. And the second I started feeling like somehow it was me and my kid again instead of, no, he's my kid, right? Because that was what he had been telling me. No, he's my kid. No, he's my kid. He goes, you didn't do that. You didn't do that to your kid. I did that to your kid. I was preparing him. And all of a sudden, my faith, again, soars to the skies. And you're floating around and not worried. And everybody's going to see me probably downtrodden a little bit today. Like when I came in, I'm, I'm still shaking, actually. I want everybody to know that it's not because I'm worried about my kid or that I don't think he's going to be okay. Because like God has told me like a million times in the past two weeks, he's not mine. He's his. I am going to miss him. I'm totally going to miss him. That's, that's my issue right now. I've had him for almost 19 years and here he goes. I said all that to say that our faith can go so far. It can take us right up to the edge of when the thing is actually going to happen. Okay? We can run right up to the door of the church, but if we don't come in and sit down, then where, then where is it at? Our faith only goes as far as our actions, as, as, as what we, we're going to take it. And it, it's, it's just like love. Like, you can say you love somebody over and over and over again, but if you don't ever do anything for them, if you don't ever actually show them that you love them, if you just talk it, how are they going to know that you love them? Unless you reach out and touch them them or do something for them. Anything like that. It's the same with faith. You can say you have faith all day, but when the storm clouds start blowing and the ship starts pitching left and right, is your faith still there or was it just talk? Do you actually have it? Do you actually believe in the living God? Is your faith so secure that, that, that you can send 10,000 to flight? Where are you in that? And I hope that we're all reaching out to that point of faith, whatever it is, and, and saying, yes, I have it, and stepping out and showing that God is faithful. Because having faith means that we know that God is faithful to what he says, to what he wants us wants for us in our life. And that takes away all the fear and all that stuff. But not until we actually go out into it, can we discover that it's actually there, that we have it, and how powerful it is? My faith, personally, and this is like, uh, everybody's faith comes from a different thing. Maybe you've seen a miracle in your life, and that made you decide that I'm going to have faith now, but this is the true God. For me, it was just, I was raised, and I never knew any different, and God's always just been there, and in small, and, and, and sometimes big ways. Like, you know, so they came after getting to those miracles. Well, that didn't happen to me, but it happened to my kids. So there's just all these little things in my life that have led up to me just believing and knowing God. Most of you know that I'm more like the warrior kind of God friend. Like, I, I like that side of God. I mean, trust me, when I'm hurt and I'm sorrowful, I want him to be the lamb, okay? I want him to be the comforter. I want him to be you know, this, God, but in real life, most of the time, you need the God with the sword in his hand fighting your battles for you. I, I don't know about you guys, but in my personal life, that's the God that's usually 
by my side because we're fighting something. And I say, God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. Who else would we go to? If, if I didn't have faith in you, what would I be doing right now? What would my life amount to? Where would I go? So for me, faith is almost just like breathing. It's so, like, how, how, how would I go on if I didn't have faith? But I know other people struggle more because, like I said, either they had incidents where they thought God was going to come through for them and they didn't, or maybe they just had one small incident that showed them God they haven't seen anything for a long time. And all of a sudden you start feeling your faith wane. Well, when God's calling you to do something, when the situation's right there, reach out in that faith and, and let God show himself to be who he is, to increase that faith in your life. It makes everything so much easier. Like, I kept saying, I don't know how I'm going to say goodbye to my kid, and I'm standing up here preaching without tears running down my face. And in fact, I didn't even wear mascara today because I thought I was going to be a crying baby. And it didn't even matter. So, there's my little faith, not wearing mascara, and God saying, what's up? Why, like, I should have worn mascara. Um, I just want to read one piece of scripture. The, the fighting warrior God side of me, side, is the God that I love to read about, I love to hear about. That's what I'm going to share with you guys today. And, um... For faith for me, the scripture is so huge because it says, like, if I'm in a lowly place, all we have to do is call out. And then that God that I know that comes with smoke, that comes with all this power and majesty, is the one who comes to me. So I'm going to read Psalm 18. And those of you who already know it are probably going, yeah. Psalm 18, I didn't mark it because I thought I'd find it easily, but okay. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Right there, just those first few scriptures already have got you concreted, okay? He... How many more times can he say that he is going to be a barrier for you? He, he, he says it so many different ways. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. And sometimes you look at that scripture and you're like, well, I'm not dying, I'm not sick. But you know what? The spirits that come and try to take us down, like despair and pride and lust and all these things, they are the course of death. They are what's taking us to the grave. So... This is basically saying, whatever is trying to take this flesh bag back to the dirt is what I'm crying against. My enemies, we know one great enemy, right? So basically, David's like, when this world is suffocating me to the point of, of you know, like, I'm going to die, like my flesh is going back to the dirt, I called to God and he heard me. And then, this is right here, so it gets good, everybody. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook, and they trembled because he was angry. Who's messing with my kid? Who's messing with my kid? Not my kid, right? Because my kid isn't my kid, it's his kid. My life isn't my life, it's his life. Who's messing with my kid? He heard somebody crying out for him from heaven. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. 
Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advance with hailstones and bolts of lightning. This is a cool picture. Oh, gosh. This is the God who served people. If you had any doubts whatsoever about how awesome God is, the scripture just screams, I am an awesome God. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies, great bolts of lightning, and routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high, took hold of me. He drew me out of the deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. Woo! <laughs> when we call out to God, that's what He does. He moves the heavens and the mountains. He moves the clouds away. Remember we were talking about when the storm comes rolling and your boat is pitching left, right and left? He comes with his brightness that advances the storm. The storm goes before him, out from before him. Fire and smoke come from his nostrils and his mouth, and he takes his arrows and shoots his enemies. And then after he's made a scene about coming to get you, Okay, he wants to let everybody know the whole earth is going to shake. He's going to reach down and pull you out of whatever deep water that was that you were in. That guy, after all that show of power, after all that show of power, making the, it says, the land was bare and the seas were exposed and the foundations of the earth lay bare. After all that exposure of power, what does he do? He takes this right here and reaches down and snatches you out of the depths of the water. That's the God we serve. I always say, if the God who created all this is going to call me his kid, what am I worried about? If the God who does all these things just when I cry to him to come save me, Where's my faith? How come my faith isn't blasting the walls off of this building right now? How come I can't get that into my heart and soul and be like, I'm never going to worry again about a thing ever. I wish I could do that. This is the God we serve. This is the God that loves us, that calls us his own. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to pray now before we worship. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word today, Lord God. And thank you for building faith in our lives, Lord God, by showing how great and powerful you are, how much you care for us, Lord God, by your great acts of power, Lord God, and by your great acts of mercy and love. We thank you, Lord God. Speak to every one of us today, Lord God. Let us know specifically how much you love each and every one of us, Lord God. I feel it right now in this place, Lord God, is your love for us. Go with us, be with us, Lord God. Let the praises that we're about to sing be exalted to you, Lord God. Let it be a sweet fragrance before you, Lord. 